This is Boxing Talk 8576. Um, I want to come with, in my opinion, Keith Thurman is the most complete fighter today. Let me say this again. In my opinion, so people won't get hurt out there, you know, get all beside themselves. Keith Thurman is the most complete fighter today and I'm going to explain why. Keith Thurman is a boxer puncher. A pure boxer puncher. He can box and he can punch. He has shown it in the ring. He showed a good display of boxing against Soto Carras and counter punching. So you know he added that to his repertoire he can counterpunch. He showed in that Soto Karras fight that he can counterpunch. He allowed Soto Karras to come to him to and lead the fight, and he was counterpunching Soto Karras and using a stiff, stiff jab. Keith Thurman goes to the body very, very well, as you've seen in the, in the Diego Chavez fight. When he came out, they both came out, you know, showing their power off, and Diego, you know, Chavez only had one gear. He showed that he was a, you know, a really, really good puncher. But Keith Thurman showed him that he can also box. Keith Thurman started boxing, going to Diego Chavez's body. He dropped him with a body shot. Then later on, finished him off to the head, you know, got the knockout, got the stoppage. He has a really, really stiff jab, not a pawing jab, not one of those range-finding jabs. Keith Thurman has a nice, Stiff jab that pops people's heads back. Go back and look at the Soto Cross fight. He was popping that man's head back with that jab. It's like it's a really stiff jab. It's like one of those Larry Holmes Klitschko jabs. In my opinion, opinion, Keith Thurman has one of the best one or two or three jabs in the game today. He moves very well in the ring. He gives angles. He knows how to not take the full blunt of most punches. Yes, he did get caught early in the Soto Cross fight. He, um, after that, he worked on his range. Soto Cross really didn't land anything significant after that punch. He landed a couple other good punches, but Soto Cross is a tall guy with long arms. So, uh, Keith Thurman had to figure out the range. But he figured out the range, which is he's thinking in the ring. You know, like, unlike, you know what I'm saying, Berto when he fought. You know what I'm saying? Guerrero and um, when um, Broner recently fought Maidana, when Maidana came out and started landing those right hands, Berto, not Berto, uh, Broner did not make an adjustment. You know, he did not go into his mind and make an adjustment to stop getting hit with the right hand. He kept getting hit by the same punch. See what I mean? Keith Thurman got hit by that big shot, and Soto Carras didn't really land anything big after that. So, Keith Thurman shows that he has a mind to make adjustments in the ring. And he's a complete fighter, in my opinion. Keith Thurman can, like, let's say, like, a usually a fighter that fights from the outside, he doesn't, the reason why he's fighting from the outside, because he really doesn't want to fight in the inside. And most, I see a lot of fighters, even, you know, great fighters, you know, that, fights on the outside but don't like to fight on the inside because fi fighting on the inside is a physical physical game and most outside fighters are not really physical physical look at Devin Alexander against Sean Porter if Devin Alexander could have kept the fight on the outside in my opinion he would have won the fight you know what I'm saying but Sean Porter and his team knew if we got in the inside and roughed him up and, and messed up his rhythm because outside fighters are usually rhythm fighters we can win the fight and, and he stuck with the game plan and that's what they did he bullied uh, uh, Devin Alexander in the inside and slowed the fight down and made it an ugly rough and tumble fight just like Bradley did against um, uh, Devin Alexander he did the same thing he roughed him up on the inside because Devin Alexander does have great, you know, feet and um, really fast hands and um, pretty good boxing skills. So, you know, Bradley knew going to that fight, if I rough him up, get an inside, mess up his timing, I got a good chance of winning this fight, and he did it. 
Porter took a page out of Bradley's book and did the same thing. And most inside fighters can't fight on the outside. You know, look at Ruslan. Ruslan came out and him and Bradley collided in the middle of the ring fighting an inside fight and he was getting the best of Bradley, rocking Bradley time and time again. But as soon as Bradley in the middle round started boxing, Ruslan was kind of lost. If you go back to that fight, the middle rounds, Bradley was winning easy. It's just when Bradley decided to fight on the inside with a fighter that fights very well on the inside, Bradley got in trouble. Keith Thurman can fight on the inside and on the outside. His punching, because he's a great puncher and he throws <laughs> hooks and uppercuts on the inside, it allows him to compete on the inside with any inside fighter and possibly more than likely he's going to get them out of there with those hard you know hooks and uppercuts that he has so he can fight on the inside and if he fight an outside fighter he can fight if he fight an inside fighter he can also if he wants to he can take the fight to the outside because he's a really really good a really really good boxer he showed that he can box on the outside. He showed again in the Cross fight, Diego Chavez fight. He had another fight against another guy. I forgot the guy's name. It's kind of a weird name. He he showed in that fight that he can box and go 12 rounds. He has the energy to go 12 rounds. Most punchers, when they're only punchers, they usually wear down in the second half of the fight. Punchers are, if you usually have a puncher in there and he's just a puncher, He's dangerous for the first six rounds, five or six rounds, and then, you know, the power started diminishing slowly after that. Keith Thurman has both, and he has very good stamina, which is very, very important in boxing. That's why I say he's the most complete fighter. He has stamina, a nice stiff jab. He goes to the body very well. He can box, and he can punch, and he can move, and his hands are fast may not be Pacquiao fast or Mayweather fast, but he's he's right up under there, which gives him give him really good speed with his hands. So Keith Thurman, in my opinion, is the most complete fighter in boxing today. You out there in, in YTBC, y'all might think different, or you may have another fighter that you think is the be is the most complete fighter. You know, just let me know who's the most complete fighter in your eyes. Now, I don't have no illusions of Keith Thurman going undefeated and all this crap. No, I've been on Keith Thurman for a long time now. You know, a lot of people are on Keith Thurman now because I remember a lot of people out there were saying, oh, uh, when I had on my page that I think Keith Thurman will beat Broner. A lot of people was like, oh, man, Keith Thurman ain't ready for Adrian Broner. And I was like, no, Keith Thurman is ready for Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner does things in the ring that will get him KO'd if he ever get in the ring with Keith Thurman. If he don't change the things. And I think if he, even if he change him, Keith Thurman will still beat him. Because Keith Thurman is a better fighter overall, period. And... Adrian Broner, the reason why he had trouble, I picked him in the Maidana, uh, against the Maidana. I got to admit, I did pick Adrian Broner to win, you know, in the ninth or tenth round by stoppage. And the reason why I picked uh, Adrian Broner, because I didn't think Maidana would be able to do the things that he did in the fight, the whole fight. I thought Maidana, maybe because um, Garcia is giving Maidana, you know, tools to use his jab and move around more, but... I didn't think Maidana can do it the whole fight. And I said if Maidana is able to do it the whole fight, he has a chance to win. But I didn't think I didn't think he had the uh, ability to do it the whole fight. I seen when he fought Jose Cito Lopez and Soto Carras, he came out using the, using the jab effectively for the first three or four rounds in those fights. And as soon as he got hit, he went back to the old Maidana. And I thought the old Maidana would get beat by Broner because the old Maidana stood in front of you coming straight forward in the straight line. When he fought Broner, when Maidana fought Broner, he, he was giving Broner angles, and he was using his jab upstairs and downstairs, which is a credit to him and a credit to Garcia that Garcia put some extra wrinkles in there and changed, um, you know, 
and got uh, Maidana ready for that fight. I don't think Broner Camp really thought that. Uh, I thought that. I think that they thought what everybody else thought that they was fighting a straight come forward Maidana, but Maidana. One thing when a when, when a fighter get with a trainer, it takes about three or four fights for the trainer to get through through the fighter to change some things if it's gonna ever happen. And it seems like Broner called McDonough at the wrong time because because McDonough was a different fighter than what Broner and them thought and what we thought McDonough was. So credit to McDonough. But Keith Thurman is the most complete fighter in boxing today. You know, leave a comment, respectable comment about. And let me know who you think is the most complete fighter in boxing today. Keith Thurman is a classic boxer puncher. He has defense. He moves his feet. He has a great jab. He can punch. And he can box. And he goes to the body very, very well. And he has the right mental state. You know what I'm saying? He's not coming in there acting like a clown, saying he's the best in the world. You know what I'm saying? He don't act like he already made it. He knows he still has things to work on. I've been, I've been seeing interviews with Keith Thurman, and he says the different things that he's working on. And the latest fight I've seen against with Soto Karras is the man is a pretty good counter puncher. You know, it's things that he do wrong in the ring, you know, about like throw the uppercut from too far out. He has to, he has to work on that. And um, getting caught early in the fights with big shots because, you know, last couple fights, he has been getting caught early with big shots, so he has to work on that. And I believe he's the guy to actually look at tape instead of these guys saying, oh, I don't look at tape. What's wrong with you looking at tape and seeing what you're doing wrong? Because no one is perfect. Everyone can look at tape and learn from their last fight or learn from the opponent that they're fighting. Like Broner was like, oh, i never seen um, a Donna fight on tape. I don't look at tape. Well, you should have looked at tape. It maybe would have helped you in the fight if you would have looked at a little tape. But, you know, that's, you know, we all have to learn from mistakes. So we'll see if Broner is able to go back into the lab because he will have to go back to the lab and learn how to box. Because Broner don't, he, he, he doesn't know how to box. He relies on his power and his speed of his hands. He doesn't know how to box. He doesn't use an educated jab. He doesn't throw really great punches off his jab. He don't use a variation of punches. You know what I'm saying? But that's for him to go work out. Hope he go work it out. You know what I'm saying? And and be able to re, uh, resume his career and get his career back on track. But right now, Keith Thurman is on the rise. He has not made it yet. I hope he gets the Maidana fight. I think Keith Thurman can beat Maidana. In my opinion, he can beat Maidana. Maidana is a great, a really, really good fighter. Uh, takes... You know, I take my hat off to Maidana. You know what I'm saying? He stopped the Broner train. But I think Keith Thurman is the most complete fighter in boxing today. Boxing Talk 8576. I'm out.